So, you have a character in a film that needs to be shot by an arrow, but you also don't want to risk your actor's life? Naturally. <laughs> it's a good thing that you hit this video then, because today we are looking at how to quickly and easily fake getting shot with an arrow, all with an After Effects, starting right now. So we have the raw footage in After Effects right here, which is of our actor. As you can see, he's pretending to get shot. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we need to remove some of the frames in between him uh, pretending to get shot to add impact to the hit. So we just wanna scrub through the shot until he gets to the point where he's pretending to get hit, which is right there. So we can start right here, Control D to split the layer then move ahead about three, about two frames actually. Control Alt D again and delete this middle part and then move the top layer forward. Uh, I would only cut uh, up to two layers. I think three might be a little bit too much, but if we play through now with those two frames, sorry, not two layers. I would only cut two frames um, of a shot for this type of effect. I think three or more is a little too much, but if we play through, we can see now there's a lot more impact to the hit. So the next thing we wanna do is create our arrow asset. And what we are using for that is just this image right here that we got offline. I wanna take that and drop it in to make it a new composition. And then we are just going to mask around one of these arrows right here. Now, next thing we're gonna do is a very subtle detail, but if we look at this arrow, we can see that there's no shadows on this arrow. But if we look at our clip, there's only one light source, which is uh, there's this fire going on in the desert. And if he was to be shot by an arrow with only one light source, naturally you would see a slight shadow on the other side. So let's create that slight shadow in our arrow asset. We can right mouse click, go to new, and then adjustment layer, right mouse click on that adjustment layer, go to effect, and we can just do color correction, Lumetri color, and then we can take the basic uh, corrections and then just bring down the exposure uh, around negative two would be good. Now we're gonna create a mask on our adjustment layer that is just literally going basically in the middle of our bow, and then hit F on our layer and let's feather it out to about five. And now you can see that we have a shadow on our arrow. And now looking at it, I do wanna make it a little darker, which is an easy fix. If we go back over to our Lumetri color, we can make the exposure negative five instead. And now you can see we have a nice defined shadow. And we can always adjust this shadow um, by moving the points in our mask however we want to. Now, we can go back to our project uh, panel right here. And then you can see we have our composition for the arrow right there. We can go back to our main composition and then drop this in. And now we have this arrow asset for our shot. All right, now let's move to the frame where he gets hit, which is gonna be right where we cut this clip right there. Now let's make the arrow a 3D layer because that'll come in handy a little bit later. And then let's just adjust the scale, position and rotation uh, to make it look like it's actually going into his chest. So right there looks good. Next thing we wanna do is we want to mask off the tip of the arrow right here so it actually is in his chest. So we can take our mask tool with the layer selected and create a nice mask right here. I'm gonna go along this little crease in his shirt just to uh, add a little bit more detail with it. And then let's hit M, change the mask to subtract, and then let's just feather it to five. So now we're gonna go through frame by frame and adjust the position of our arrow where needed. And we're only going to focus on the position of this point right here where the arrow is meeting his shirt. We don't have to worry about the rotation or anything like that for right now. Let's just focus on this point and keeping it consistent. But before we do that, let's grab our anchor point adjustment tool, take our anchor point and let's put it right at this arrow tip right there. That is very important. I did not forget to do that in this tutorial and had to reset this. I did not do that. Oh my gosh. Anyway, so let's try this again. I mean, this is the first time we're doing this, sorry. So we're going to keyframe the position and then we're going to use the page down button on the keyboard to go a frame ahead each time and then adjusting the shot where needed. So when we're done with that, we're left with this right here, which I know looks pretty janky, but please trust the process. Anyway, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through it again and now adjust the rotation. Now, for the rotation, as you know, we have this on a 3D layer, so we're gonna be using the Y and Z axis rotations, which the Z is like a clock, rotating like a clock, I should say, and then the Y is rotating at us and away from us. So let's go ahead and do that as well. 
So with the rotation applied, we're left with this, which still looks a little wonky, but it's getting there. Next thing we wanna do is add our motion blur on our layer. So if we click the three ball little symbol, make sure that it's enabled for our timeline. Now let's make the arrow hit the dude in the chest. So we already have our ending keyframe right here uh, for what we started on. So we can go one, two keyframes back take our arrow and then just drag it right on off screen. Make sure that we are keeping it consistent with the angle that it's at because an arrow would not fly at someone like this. That is common knowledge, Austin, but I will say it anyway. And with that one simple keyframe, we've now created this. So now if we look at our arrow, we can see that it's far too bright for this scene. So let's right mouse click, go to effect, go to color correction and go to uh, brightness contrast. And let's just bring that brightness down as much as we can. So now let's create the shadow that would be casted on our actor's face from this arrow hitting him in the chest. So we can take the layer of our arrow, control D to duplicate it, go to the bottom one and then right mouse click. Let's go to pre-compose move all attributes into a new composition and let's name this arrow shadow we're going to right mouse click on that hit effect go to generate then fill and let's make the fill from red to black hit okay then we're going to go again right mouse click effect distort and then go to cc bend it and we can see our two points right here are made for this effect and these two points represent how the object will bend so we'll want to take one put it at the tip right here, and then take the other and put it at the other end of the arrow. And then we can take the bend and put it down to something like negative 15. And you can see now that we have this slight bent uh, black shadow being formed right there. The next thing we wanna do is just rotate the shadow as well. So let's take our anchor point tool and then take our anchor point and bring it over to where the shadow is meeting the arrow and the boy's chest. Hit R on our layer and then rotate it up a little bit further up his face. Now let's right mouse click on our layer again, go to effect, blur and sharpen, and then Gaussian blur right down here. And then just push it up until something looks natural with a shadow look. And then we can adjust the opacity of our layer. If we select the layer, hit T, and then we can set it to something like 85. And now we are left with this nice shadow. Now with the shadow, you can see how it's extending even off his head up right here. It's barely noticeable, but it is there. So what we can do is just take the shadow layer and then create a mask around his head like so, and then go make sure you go all the way around the shadow and then feather it out to something like 10 and then just keyframe through uh, his head. It doesn't have to be a perfect mask. It can be somewhat rough, but just enough so we are cutting it off from going past his head. And the final step that we'll be taking to create this effect is adding a slight blood detail in his shirt as the arrow is piercing his skin. For that, we'll be using this shot right here of blood splattering up on the screen from Video Copilot's Action Essentials. But this element that we're using is going to be so small, you can just search blood splat overlay on Google and use whatever good image you get from that and it will work just the same. So we're gonna take this blood element, bring it into our composition, and we're just gonna scale it down a whole bunch. Now you wanna take down the scale blood stain and put it right where the arrow is meeting his skin. Clearly we wanna take the layer as well and put it underneath the arrow. So since this layer is a video of blood splattering up on the window and I don't actually want that, we're just going to right mouse click on the layer, go to time and then freeze frame. And now we have a frozen image of this blood. So now just as we did with the arrow, we're gonna go frame by frame, adjusting the position to keep it right below the arrow where it's meeting his shirt. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we can go to the first frame where he's getting hit, where we have our blood start and hit T bring up the opacity and keyframe our opacity to make it fade in. So let's have the one keyframe for 100% dragged over to the right. Let's drag the opacity down to zero. And let's drag this keyframe pretty far out to have it slowly fade in. And if we scrub ahead, we can see about right there, you wouldn't even be seeing the blood on his shirt anymore because his hand's kind of covering up. So we can just select the layer control D to trim off the end. Make sure we turn on motion blur for that layer as well. And just like with the arrow, I wanna bring down the brightness of this blood because it is pretty bright and also kind of saturated. So let's go ahead and right mouse click on our blood layer, go to color correction, Lumetri color and let's go to basic color correction. Let's take the saturation and put it down to 90 and then the exposure, let's bring it down to negative 0.5. And then that leaves us with a very subtle blood element as if the arrow truly pierced his skin and there's a little bit of blood now beginning to seep 
through his chest cavity. <laughs> I got a C in biology. But that's it, that's the effect. You can save a life on your film set just by doing about an hour of editing. Remember, as I said before, we did not use tracking points on this shoot, but if you can, go ahead and do that. That's going to help with the edit, but as I said before, the frame by frame animating also did not take that long either. I just know it can be annoying sometimes. If you like this video and you wanna show your support, you can give it a like, hit subscribe, hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything. This channel is saving lives from people getting shot on film sets from Comanche arrows. Anyway, I wish you well on all your filmmaking journeys and uh, have a good night or a good day or a good afternoon or, you know, a good year. That's a tire company. <laughs>